Hi Muskies! I'm back again this week with three new book talks. Um, these are some more of my favorites because to be honest I have a lot of favorites. Um, so again all three of these books are available as free ebooks right now. I'll put links down below. So the first book I have for you is a mystery thriller. It's called I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga. So the main character of I Hunt Killers is Jazz and Jazz is a very likable teenager. In fact he's a charmer. Um, but he's also the son of the world's most notorious and infamous serial killer. And for his dear old dad, Take Your Son to Work Day was year-round. So Jazz has witnessed criminal scenes the way that most cops wish they could, from the criminal's point of view. And now, even though Jazz's dad has been in jail for years, bodies are starting to pile up in the little sleepy town of Lobo's Nod again. In an effort to prove that murder doesn't run in his family, Jazz decides to join the police in the hunt for the new serial killer. But Jazz has a secret. Could he be more like his father than anyone knows? So I'm going to read you a real short excerpt from I Hunt Killers. Even before getting caught, Billy, that's Jazz's dad, had been questioned by police numerous times in connection with his crimes, always as an eyewitness or a passerby. Billy had enjoyed these times, seeing the inner workings of the investigation against him, and had always cooperated as long as it didn't involve the truth. One thing he had drummed into Jazz's head, don't ever tell the cops more than they ask. Never, ever, ever. Jazz had broken that rule. It wasn't me, he said again, dug deep into a hole and not sure how to get out. He had what was called guilty knowledge. He knew things that only the killer or an eyewitness would know. And he had to explain how he knew those things, or else the cops would think that he was the killer. And Jazz didn't blame them. How much of a leap was it to think that the son of the world's most notorious serial killer would someday snap. So this is author Barry Liga's most popular book. It is so popular that it is now an eight book series. Uh, the main story is three books, so a trilogy, and then he's written five more books as prequels to this book which tell the story of Jazz's father Billy Dent. The second book I have for you today is The Crossover by Kwame Alexander and this is a novel in verse which means it is written in poetry or lyric form instead of in long paragraphs. This also means that it's a really fast read because there aren't that many words on a page. So, with a bolt of lightning on my kicks, the court is sizzling, my sweat is drizzling, stop all the quivering, cause tonight I'm delivering, announces 12 year old Josh Bell. He and his twin brother Jordan are awesome on the basketball court, but Josh has more than basketball in his blood. He's got mad beats too. And he tells his family story in verse in this fast and furious middle grade novel of family and brotherhood. In the crossover, Josh and Jordan must come to grips with growing up on and off the court to realize that breaking rules comes at a terrible price as their story's heart-stopping climax proves a game changer for their entire family. So if you've never read a novel in verse, this is a great place to start. Kwame Alexander is a fantastic author. His spoken word poems read more like rap lyrics. He has written so many other books, including one about soccer, one about music, and a prequel to the crossover called Rebound. Check out the links in the doobly-doo for a video of Kwame Alexander talking about writing the crossover. The last book I have for you today is The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. So the secret to this book is that it is recommended for all high school and upper middle school readers, but it is so, the book is so well written that it has been used for the AP literature exam in the past. So it is set in South Carolina in 1964, and The Secret Life of Bees tells the story of Lily Owens, whose life has been shaped around the blurred memory of the afternoon her mother was killed. But when Lily's black caretaker and stand-in mother Rosaline insults three of the deepest racists in the town, Lily decides that both of them should run away. They escape to Turban, South Carolina, a town that holds the secret to Lily's mother's past. Taken in by a centric trio of black beekeeping sisters, Lily is introduced to their mesmerizing world of bees and honey and the Black Madonna. This is a remarkable novel about divine female power, a story that women will share and pass on to their daughters for years to come. So one of my favorite parts about this book, besides the three, three sisters working as beekeepers, there are also quotes at the beginning of each chapter that draw parallels between the characters in the story and the lives of bees. So my favorite quote is from chapter 8. Honeybees depend not only on physical contact with their colony, but also require its social companionship and support. Isolate a honeybee from her sisters and she will soon die. And that's from The Queen Must Die and Other Affairs of Bees and Men. 
So again, all three books I talked about today are available as free ebooks. I Hunt Killers and The Crossover are on Mac and Via. Again, I'll put links down below. And The Secret Life of Bees is an ebook available on a new resource called the National Emergency Library. I'll put a link to that below, and the website has directions on how you can read hundreds of educational books for free. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll be back again next week with some more book talks, and please don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you're reading.